So you've got a burning question that you want answered. Say for example, you're coming to sunny South Africa on a holiday and you want to spend time at some of our beautiful beaches, but you know that it's great white shark territory and you've heard of some attacks and bites in the area, but you really want to swim. So what do you do? Well, you've heard of some of those shark deterrent or appellant devices that people can wear and you're asking yourself, do they actually work? But the more important question you should be asking yourself is how do you go about finding the truthful answer to that question in a quick and easy way? Hello everybody and welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. For those who don't know, my name is Dr. Chantelle Elston and I am a marine scientist. And on this channel, we talk about everything ocean, marine biology, science related. But I'm very excited for today's video because we are doing a product review on a new AI tool called Consensus. They approached me and asked me to do this review and immediately I was like, yes, because if you've seen some of my past videos, you will know that I'm very passionate about sort of debunking misinformation, disinformation, and trying to teach you guys the right tools on how to think critically about the information you're evaluating to come up with the most truthful or correct answer because it is a bit of a wild, wild west out there on the internet. And it's really important to know how to figure out whether the information you're reading is accurate or true or the best source of information. So you and I are gonna go on a journey today where we try and figure out what is the best tool in order to get this accurate, truthful information nice and quickly. Um, and so traditionally, right, if we had a question like this, we would have asked Google. Google has been around for decades now. It was pretty much the status quo for a long time if we had a question that we want answered. So for example, let's go to Google and we're gonna type in our question, do shark deterrence work? And obviously, as you know, a bunch of different websites are gonna come up. Um, so you're going to have information from news websites, people's opinions. You might have the actual um, sort of uh, people who are trying to sell you products, their websites. And as I said, you don't, you don't really know if you can trust what they're saying because they're just trying to sell you something. And now you're going to spend ages and ages trying to go through all this information, trying to like figure out whether these things work, whether they don't work, which ones are the best ones. Um, and so this is like very time consuming and difficult to know if you're getting accurate information out of it. But now the new kid on the block is ChatGPT. And I'm sure you guys know about it, but this is essentially the new AI tool that people go to, they type in the question and it will bring up this AI generated sort of synthesized answer to your question. So let's have a look and see what ChatGPT tells us. So do shark deterrence work? Okay, so they're telling us that uh, shark deterrents work in certain situations, but the effectiveness depends on the type of deterrent, species of shark, specific circumstances, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then some limitations. Um, and essentially they conclude by saying, if you're considering a deterrent for personal use, an electric deterrent like Shark Shield is among the most reliable options. Okay, so they actually give you a specific brand. Um, however, and then some some other things. So there is this is actually quite a nice answer. Um, you know, it tells you that it's it is fairly nuanced. It says yes, it can work in some situations, but not all situations. So ChatGPT is great because it does. It's much more quick, right? So we didn't we didn't have to go and sift through multiple web pages to come to this conclusion. ChatGPT does it for us but you never quite know how accurate it is. We all know that ChatGPT is kind of um, prone to making mistakes, making errors, because it's just trained on whatever is on the internet. So we know there's lots of misinformation and disinformation on the internet, and so it will just spurt out whatever is being thrown around the internet. So we don't actually have a lot of trust in how effective and accurate it, its answers are. So if you are interested in the accuracy and the truthfulness of the information that you're reading, which really you should be in, in all cases, but especially ones like this where it really impacts you, we really should be trying to get our information from science, from data, from experiments, from things that we know we can trust and it's not just somebody's opinion out there on the internet. So for instance, me personally, I'm a scientist. So if I'm looking for an answer to a question like this, I will go to Google Scholar and I will consult the literature. So I'll type in my question into Google Scholar and it will bring up a whole bunch of different research and scientific papers. 
But again, this is gonna be very time consuming. I'm gonna to have to sit there and sift through all of these different papers. I'm gonna to have to read the papers. I'm gonna to have to evaluate them, see if their sample sizes are good enough, are their methods good enough. Um, and so this is, again, a pretty time consuming process for me to get an accurate answer. But what if you had the efficiency and the time saving feature of ChatGPT coupled with the accuracy and truthfulness of uh, Google Scholar and science, that's my friends where consensus comes into play. So this is the AI tool that we're reviewing today and it is fantastic because it's like ChatGPT where you can ask it a question and it will bring you a quick synthesized answer, but it's only trained on scientific literature. So you're only getting answers that are based in science, data, real accurate information. So let's have a look. So we've got the nice consensus um, interface open here. Um, it's really nice and simple. It looks fairly similar to ChatGPT. So we're gonna type in our question, do shock deterrence work? And also um, there's a bunch of other features on this platform, which we're gonna go through. My favorite part of this really is at the top here, you kind of have this consensus meter, right? So this tool is called consensus. So if you ask a yes or a no question, it will give you like the general consensus from scientific literature. What are most papers saying? So here, most paper or 33% um, of papers that it, um, so this is from 18 relevant papers. So it tells you how many. 33% um, of those papers say yes, shark deterrence work. 6% say possibly, 44% say mixed, and 17% say no. Um, so this is quite nice because again, it shows you this nuance. So okay, yes, some say yes, some say no, some say maybe. So again, there's, it's, this is a tricky question and it's a, it's a difficult question to answer and it is fairly new. There hasn't been a huge amount of research done into it. So there are going to be I, I mean, it would be it would be weird if it said yes, definite yes or definite no, because there are lots of things to take into account. Here. And what is really great about this is you can follow the citation. So say, for instance, here it says this one also men mentions shark shield um, and been tested on white sharks, so showing a significant reduction in interactions. And then you see this number one after it. So it actually shows you the the citation or the paper that it's using to get this information from. And then you can follow this paper through. So now we can go have a look at this paper. It gives you the abstract, which is basically like the summary of the paper. Um, and you can go into like more delve into that paper if you really want to. But let's carry on going. So it gives you some limitations of variability and then a nice conclusion. Um, and so, as I said, there were some, there were some other features that this has, which I really like because I kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier not all science is created equal. So you always want to look for papers that have a big sample size that use kind of the right methodology. And, and I am a scientist. I'm trained to like try and figure out, you know, what's right, what's not. Um, so this is, but this will gives, it gives you like these little badges, I guess, um, showing you what is particular about that specific study. So this is the one we looked at. It's a non-random control trial. So it's not randomized or not controlled, which is not good because if you're comparing the behavior of a shark um, when the device is turned on, okay, you're showing something, but it's not comparing it to a control. So what was the shark doing when that device wasn't there? So that's actually not so great. So I would take the findings of this paper with like a pinch of salt. We know it's an animal study, obviously, but it is in a rigorous journal. So again, not all science is created equal and not all science journals are created equal, but this is in a really good one. So we, we can have some measure of trust in, in this paper. So I really, really like consensus. I think it's a fantastic tool for everybody, whether you're a scientist like me and you're doing a literature review, you have a science question that you want to answer, whether you're doing your studies or whether you're doing your research later on in your career. I think this is a really, really great starting point for you to ask a question and get some answers, look through some of the basic literature. Um, or whether you're just, whether you're not a scientist, whether you just want to know, do shark deterrence work? Um, will fish oil pills make my brain work better? Uh, does running, uh, I don't know, increase my fitness, whatever, like any kind of 
question that you have related to yourself, related to the world around you, related to science. I think this is a really, really fantastic tool to get accurate and truthful answers because as we see it's based on science and we can really evaluate the science that it is using in a very quick and effective manner using these badges um, and it's uh, it's quick like this took us you know a couple of seconds to type in our question get the okay general feeling for what's going on and then if you really want you can go you can delve into more details so I really really like this tool I think it's fantastic for everybody and I'm so stoked that they they sort of like approached me to ask me to review it because I'm very very happy to share this tool with you guys and to recommend it to you so I also just wanted to run through a couple of other quick features for those who are like particularly interested because there is like a few extra features which I think are really really cool. Um, so there is this filter feature here at the top so essentially you can filter for you know when it was published. So sometimes if you ask like a slightly more general question it, there would be literature stretching back like decades before like since the 80s 60s or whatever so if you want the more recent information you can sample or you can filter for the recent years um, whether it has been cited a lot of times so um, usually papers that are cited more frequently they're the ones that scientists in the field generally have a good respect for and everybody kind of knows about it and accepts it so you can filter by citations you can filter by methods so here are kind of some of those badges that we were talking about i'm not going to go through them in detail but if you really want to like filter by methods you can do that but uh, yeah so so there's like a really cool filter feature that you can do um, you can bookmark it you can copy the text you can copy the text with citations which is the best because if you're a scientist or if you're a student you know that sometimes having to deal with in-text referencing and citations can be very time consuming so you can copy it with citations yeah so I mean I would there's a lot of really cool features here and you could spend a bit of time really really getting to know it so as I said, highly recommend this tool, definitely useful to anybody out there who is curious about the world around them. Right, that's it for today, my fellow ocean lovers. I really hope you found this video interesting and informative and useful. Please let me know down in the comments below whether you've used consensus before or maybe plan on using consensus now that you've heard about it. This is becoming a very popular tool used by scientists and people all across the world. So definitely, if you haven't heard me say it enough, highly recommend it. Um, also let me know down in the comments below what kind of questions you would ask consensus because I'm always interested to hear in what you guys are curious about. And when it comes to swimming in the oceans, please don't worry too much about sharks. We all know that the chances of getting bitten by a shark are super, super low, even here in sunny South Africa. So I hope to see you visiting and exploring our beautiful ocean waters. And I hope that the next video is not going to be so long in coming. I promise I'm going to this year, going to dedicate a bit more time to YouTube. And so I'll see you guys in the next video.